Hey everyone, I'm out here in the garage and I've got my lawnmower here. So recently I had an issue with the lawnmower wouldn't stay running. So I'm going to talk about how I addressed that issue. So stay tuned. So if you're new to the channel, I just want to welcome you here and hopefully you'll consider subscribing if you like what you see. Also, check out DIY Apprentice on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. I post lots of pictures on those platforms before I post anything on YouTube. And occasionally I'll post things on those platforms I don't post on YouTube. Also, check out the website at DIYApprentice.com. So this lawnmower I have behind me here is a Toro 20333. And I've had it for, I think, around 10 years. And about six years ago, I actually stopped using it because I tore my shoulder and I hired a company to do the lawn service while I was trying to recuperate. And that six months that I thought I was going to have off from uh, mowing my lawn, it actually turned into six years. So because of the health crisis going on out there, I've been working from home the last few months and I decided, well, I've got a little more free time. Why don't I just mow my own lawn and save myself some money? So I had the lawnmower basically sitting in my shed. I think I've used it maybe one time, if I can remember in that last six years but it has sat in the shed with stale gas in it it hasn't really been maintained so of course I pull it out I change out the gas cross my fingers and it doesn't work so what I had to do is actually take the spark plug out spray a little bit of starting fluid in it to get it running well over time the mower basically didn't like the fact that I was neglecting it and recently it decided that it was not going to run so what I'm going to talk through here is how I addressed that issue. So let's get into it. So as I mentioned, this is the Toro 20333 self-propelled mower with the personal pace feature. And that allows you to mow at your preferred walking pace. The mower has no choke or primer bulb, so it can simply be started by pulling the cord. And it's guaranteed to start in one or two pulls. It also has options for mulching or bagging clippings a wash port for hooking up a hose to clean the underside of the deck and it has the spin stop feature so you can walk away from the mower without stopping the engine. As you can see here when I pull the cord the engine runs for a couple seconds then stops. Now I'm not a small engine technician but since these are basically small combustion engines spark, air and fuel are required for them to run. I first check that the connector is properly seated on the spark plug, which it is here. Next I'm going to remove the spark plug from the front of the engine using a 13 16 inch socket or a 21 millimeter would also work. Looking closely at the spark plug, the tip looks nice and flat and there isn't much carbon buildup, but we'll still clean it up a little with the brass brush. I also check the gap between the electrode and the tip to verify it's within spec. Now this is an earlier model of the 20333 with the spark plug gap specification of 0.03 inches. So this one happens to be in good shape. You can find your Toro's spark plug spec by visiting their website and looking up the specification using the mower's serial number. Just check the decal on the rear deck behind the back door. Link is in the description. One other possibility is a short in the spark plug wire, which can be checked for continuity from one end to the other using a multimeter. But that seemed highly unlikely here. So the air filter seems to be a source of many performance issues on these lawnmowers. So I'll use a 516 socket to open the side door and remove the air filter. And this one is pretty filthy, so I'll go ahead and replace it with a new one. There's also a tube behind the shroud that directs air into the engine that we'll see later. That should be firmly attached to the shroud. Okay, so now we've got our new air filter installed. I'm going to start the mower 
or attempt to start the mower and see if that made a difference at all. And as you can see, a new filter made no difference, so we're going to continue on with our diagnosis. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to fuel. So we've eliminated spark and error as our issues potentially here. And now we're going to check the fuel delivery system. So first of all, there is fresh fuel in the tank. And it's probably a good idea to empty the tank before you start taking things apart at this point. But I just decided to go ahead and leave the gas in there since there's not much in there. I'll first remove the air filter shroud by undoing the three bolts with the 5 16th socket. Then pull it off the mower. Like most mowers, the area around the fuel line and the carburetor was very dirty. So I stuffed the paper towel in the carburetor's front port. Then I hit the area with some compressed air before continuing. Next, I'm going to pinch off the fuel hose using a hose clamp. Then I'll slide the metal clamp off the carburetor inlet using needle nose pliers. I would probably have a small container handy to catch any fuel that might spill out also. If you have any trouble removing the fuel line from the carburetor inlet, hose pliers work great in this situation. You can also gently remove the hose with needle nose pliers. So you can see here we do have fuel in the line and it appears to be flowing unobstructed to the carburetor. So that led me to believe that the carburetor could be our issue. I decided to see if I could clean the carburetor instead of having to rebuild or replace it. And this is best done with the carburetor off the mower. So I use an adjustable wrench since I didn't have a one quarter inch wrench to remove the lever's bolt then set it aside. I then remove the two 3 8 bolts fastening the carburetor to the engine and unhook the throttle cable. Okay, so now that I have the carburetor off the engine, I place my thumb and index finger over the ports, then spray the outside of the carburetor with carb cleaner to remove any remaining debris. Then holding the valves open, I sprayed inside the carburetor and I also sprayed into the fuel inlet. Having rebuilt a two barrel carburetor for my truck in the past, I knew the float bowl also had to be clean. So I removed the nut on the bottom of the float bowl with a half inch socket. And as you can see, there is quite a bit of debris, but no corrosion, which is good. I cleaned the underside of the carburetor and the float bowl with carb cleaner, then reinstalled the float bowl. After letting the carb cleaner evaporate, I reinstalled the float bowl back onto the bottom of the carburetor using a one half inch socket to secure it. All right, so now we'll reverse the procedure and see if our problem is solved. So to do so, we'll first reconnect the cable to the carburetor, reinstall the two 3 8 inch bolts holding the carburetor onto the engine. and reinstall the lever onto the carburetor using a one quarter inch wrench or in this case an adjustable wrench. Next we reconnect the fuel line to the carburetor and secure it with the metal clamp then remove the hose clamp. I cleaned up the shroud with compressed air and all-purpose cleaner, then reinstalled it with the three 5 16 bolts. Lastly, I cleaned up the air filter cover, reinstalled the air filter, 
and secured the cover with the 516 socket. So as you can see the mower is now running and the blade engages as it should. And just for your information the engine's idle speed does fluctuate a bit when the blade is not engaged. Alright so there you have it. Very cheap and very simple fix this time around. Just a few bucks for some carb cleaner to clean out the carburetor. Now it's on me at this point to make sure that I maintain this mower, make sure that I winterize it correctly and that I don't let this happen again. because. This is a pretty good mower and the last thing I want to have happen is for it to fail because I'm not maintaining it. So hopefully this information was helpful and thanks for watching. See links in the description below. Comment, like, share and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to check us out on social media. And thanks for watching.